Hi. Good morning. 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 How are you Any doing? Any miracles yet? <laughs> <laughs> Have we ascended yet? Okay. We're on lesson 318. So he says, not quite yet, almost. You mean this we're not morning. there yet? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I was just feeling like, you know, we need to finish the lessons before we you know, take off. But you're right. What we are in truth doesn't need improvement. Thanks, sis. Thank you. <laughs> All right. In me, salvation's means and end are one. What does that mean? Yeah, good question. Okay, so in ourself, holy self, salvation's means how it's going to be accomplished, the way, the how, and end, what yeah, this is all about, right? The yeah. Christ, our holiness, our innocence, salvation, its means and its end are one. So salvation is going to be accomplished in us. How's that for a little pressure? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, so it's not done for us? Well, it's going to be done through us and for us. And in yes. us. Mm -hmm. Through, yeah. for, and in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, hope that was a great lesson. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Got it? Lesson. Good. <laughs> oh, Lord. In Thanks. me, God's holy son. Can we, let's pause. Can we pause? Can we pause? Let's pause. Where do I press pause? <laughs> okay. Thank you. In me, God's holy son are reconciled all parts of heaven's plan to save the world. Just stop, sis. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy. That, yeah. that was like a holographic download. I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Do you mind to read that again, please? No, nope, not at all. In me... God's holy son are reconciled all parts of heaven's plan to save the world. Okay. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> what con what could conflict? What could conflict? when all the parts have but one purpose and one aim. How could there be a single part that stands aside or one of more or less importance than the rest? I am the means by which God's Son is saved because salvation's purpose is to find the sinlessness that God has placed in me. Mm. I was created as the thing I seek. I am the goal the world is searching for. I am God's son, his one eternal love. I am salvation's means and end as well. It's talking about the Christ, mm. the one shared identity. Mm -hmm. Let me today, my Father, take the role you offer me 
in your request that I accept atonement for myself. For thus does what is thereby reconciled in me become as surely reconciled to you. really talking about a two-part reconciliation process about where we come into through total forgiveness of what we have never been but believed we were into the deep acceptance of our true identity as the Christ then father and son father and the God and Christ are reconciled as one in being this is why we are salvation's means and end, because the ultimate realization is God and his creation as one. So in the first paragraph, line number two, what could conflict when all the parts of heaven's plan, right, mm -hmm. have but one purpose and one aim? How could there be a single part that stands alone or one of more or less importance than the rest? Um, you know, he's including the sonship here, right? This is the crisis. Is this what yes. you're... There goes, out the window goes false humility. Right. Every single part you know, is playing its role. When the Christ seemed to be obliterated into billions of separate private minds and bodies, right? We're still one. And within each one of us is a spark. And it's through our completion of accepting the atonement for ourself that the Christ is recognized. That's finding yourself in every brother, mm -hmm. looking for that spark, his innocence, and, and then recognizing it in yourself and recognizing we aren't these bodies. We are not the personality. Wow, we are that light that is within each seeming body and mind that we encounter. But that's us. And and every how can there be, you know, a hierarchy if every brother right now has his part to play in this awakening? It's all the same. It's all holy. Yeah. Each one of us stands and says, I am. The Christ in me, I am the means by which God's son is saved. So when we're identifying with a mythical me, or when we're allowing judgments or goals, a, part, a will apart from God, or um, sickness or a past or anything in the gap, right? When we go to sleep and play in the gap, we're actually denying the entire sonship you know, the means of awakening to itself. If you are the means for salvation, yeah. right? We have to be present and available for the Holy Spirit to use us. But while we're sleeping, because we think we want something else, we're not available. So again, this is not for judgment. It's either the lights on or the lights off. Are we part of the, the awakening? Are we part of salvation's plan? Or are we declaring, you know, no to our holiness? Right. So, you know, our greatest block mm -hmm. or attack against God's plan for salvation would be holding grievances, mm. judgments, resentments. Yeah. Yeah, because they serve the belief that we're bodies. Only bodies have resentments, and resentments based of, um, on a past, right? On this mm -hmm. timeline that we were talking about last couple days ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we could probably bring in Lesson 72 as a review here, mm. because Lesson 72, holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. That's it, right? So why, like you just said there, sis, because there's a body identity involved. So we have a separate will. We want to be a body and we want to use our brothers and sisters as bodies as well in all of that, which, of course, is that the, the body is the center of all grievances, seeing our brothers and sisters 
as a body yeah did you want to to talk about like how we do like the number one <laughs> way that we do this um and it's through the special relationship yeah so, shadow figures right <laughs> did you want to bring that in sis you saw something this morning yeah no i did i and i saw something this morning it but it's just it's really amazing because once i see it it shoots out into this holographic thing again i'm having that experience where i'm seeing it all and going okay let's deliver the singular message for the family but okay so let's come back and recognize Holy Spirit needs our willingness, right? That was yesterday's message about I'm choosing. It's a voluntary thing. My will apart from God, nothing's going on. So yes, Holy Spirit, here I am. And Holy Spirit needs us to be present and open in a forgiven, you know, when we do our forgiveness and uh, we relinquish our judgments and we say yes to God's will so that we can be part of salvation's plan. That's today's lesson. So what are some of the ways that ego makes sure that we're, we're not forgiving and that we're always um, unavailable, right, to salvation? That's the ego's job, to make sure that we don't wake up. And so the means that it does that is this body identity. And, our, and like Nook just said from that previous lesson, the grievances that this body and personality holds, right? Because if we are love, the body is an idea that we came up with to leave the identity as love. Love's opposite is fear in all its myriad forms. Grievances are just another way that fear is played out in the mind so that we don't know ourselves and we're not available to Holy Spirit. So let's now bring in this concept of time because remember the, the other day we were talking about somewhere in the past somebody gave us the message that we were not lovable or that we were flawed or we were abused, whatever the trauma was. There was an original trauma. And from that trauma, you accepted some beliefs about yourself as mythical me. Mythical me has some very deeply entrenched held beliefs about itself, right? And you were with, deprived of the love that you wanted from that one. So we grow up and what we, and what we don't realize is that our special relationships, the child has that primary special relationship with mother, mom and dad, but then as they get older, they call in new uh, bodies into their experience so that they can rehearse and replay that original trauma wound. Okay. So it could be someone in high school and college your job, your spouse, whomever they're really coming forward in your experience and Jesus calls these shadow figures and the reason he calls them shadow figures is because what you're do each of us are doing is we're looking at somebody and they're either acceptable to us or not depending on their suitability or matchup with our um, original trauma so it's not puppy love it's can you play the role that's going to help me live out my original trauma with my dad or my mom or my sibling or whatever? Because if you can, I'm going to love you. I'm going to feel all these connections, right? And the ego calls that love, but what it's really doing, it sees it's a perfect mate match to play out the original wound. And so Jesus says that what we do is end up in, re we're in, we choose these relationships for that purpose and we omit the one that they are totally. But we so can't much, see them. We can't see them. We don't know them. We're not in relationship with them. These shadow figures are a pulling out of one degree of who we think we're in relationship with to reanimate attack from vengeance in the past. We're taking vengeance on the past in a current relationship. Hope that, that makes sense. That. So to perpetuate the future, right? The past into to perpetuate the, the past, past yes. into the future so we can exactly. remain victims. So I'll give you an example. You all knew about my I know mind and the doer, right? Dad wouldn't give me the time of day or any uh attention unless mm -hmm. I was doing something right and doing it really right. Like, you know, and so I would find, and then, yeah, I would just re, re, 
hash that with male figures in my life as we go along. And so I'm looking at my partners as you're going to withhold and I'm going to try really, really hard to be the best that I can be and you are going to withhold so that I can still try and seek vengeance against my dad in the past here in the present. I'm recreating that dynamic. Now, do I know my partner? No. Am I accepting all of them? No, I'm taking 1% and, and trying to use them. And that's why the special relationship isn't love at all. It's attack. And so in this section on shadow figures, um, sis, I know it's chapter 17, mm -hmm. section three, and the title of it is shadows of the past. Okay. That's in the um, FIP edition of A Course in Miracles. Yeah. And on, in COA, it's five, page 553, also chapter 17, um, called Shadow Figures. And so he's, he's really talking about the importance of recognizing that while you think you're in a relationship, it's not. And you're just superimposing this whole past on the person to, to the extent that you're not, there's no relating. But he said, you know, you don't, um, and he calls them unholy relationships because they're anti-relationships. And um, he says, there's a spark there though, in your brother. And he said, if you will repurpose and let me have that relationship, I'm going to show you the part of your brother. That's the truth about him so that you see it in yourself. So you're letting that past vengeance actually be healed. You're letting the relationship be the means for that healing. But we need to see this. And so what does that have to do with anything? Okay, so in me, salvation's means and end are one. Well, the way that the ego prevents that from happening is creating that clog, right, of a, a past, an original wound that's constantly resurfing, keeping the timeline drawn out so that my future looks just like my yesterdays in this belief of a timeline. And I'm never available in the holy instant to, to receive the correction. And, if, and without that correction, I'm not available for the Holy Spirit to be part of salvation's plan. And the ego goes, oh, goody, goody. Mm. Right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Really well explained. I don't know, but it's... it's, it's no, it's good. It's Even a lot. If you could have told me that 30 years ago, it would have probably right? shaved off at least 15 years of my journey. <laughs> I think most of us recognize by now, why do I keep attracting the same kind of stuff in mm -hmm. my partnership? You know, mm -hmm. we're like, it's not about the person that we're, we're choosing. It's always going to end up being about, I'm choosing this person to reenact the ego's primary beliefs around the trauma it experienced early on. I'm not lovable. I'm shameful. I'm worthless. I'm whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all the same, but uh, yeah, that's what the special relationship is for. Mm -hmm. Until it's not. Well, it's not. That's right. So we're blocking um, God's plan for salvation, right? This By is how the ego does it, so that we that never out. are available. Yeah. So That's what time we, is for. Mm -hmm. That's what time is for. No, time is here, yeah, right? Yeah. Through the and, ego. And I was, you know, we were talking before we hit record um, today. You know, the other day we talked about what lesson was it? where we forgive our projection of time. Uh, 314, lesson 314. Yeah. And so, you know, for a while, you guys, here's the gap again. We're, when we're using shadow figures in our life, when our special relationships are just causing a, the wound to be refreshed, we do that to prop up this, this gap, okay? So we forgive our relationships. We forgive what we're using to keep this going. We forgive the, the independent will apart from God and our judgments. And what Nook was pointing to in 314 was ultimately, we come to this place when we've done a sufficient forgiveness in this to recognize there's nothing in this that's real. We forgive ourselves for the projection of time in its entirety. So remember, this is, this is the timeline, right? So we ultimately come to, I'm forgiving the idea of time and space altogether, and I'm just here in the present now moment with God as Christ, where there is no time and there is no space, there is no gap, there's no special relationships. 
So that was an, you know, when we said that was a deep dive, yes, that's, that's an advanced stage where we just go, okay, I'm forgiving the whole idea of time together, all together. So, but this, this morning you saw in the text, chapter 17 there, yeah. that Jesus is saying we have, in order to get to that milestone yes. or that conclusion, there are steps we need to take. And in one the, of those yeah. steps yeah right to go back mm -hmm. to go back and to look mm -hmm. at the past yes and to look at it not from a victim point of view but how how we've used certain relationships yeah yeah every traumatic experience in the past or even those things that we say were so so good but not real um they're hallmarks right? It's a hallmark moment in our past that says, I have a real past. I'm a real girl moving along a real timeline. And I know it because I've got this memory and that memory and this occurred and this wound and this heartbreak. And, oh, I remember when so-and-so died, right? All of these things are to keep an illusory past going. So for a while you do inventory where, you know, when I, my mind goes into the past, where am I drawn to those events? Each one of those needs to be forgiven because it actually never occurred in God. It's part of the gap and the ego made that occurrence so that we could have a sense of ourselves as we never have been, a mortal moving along a timeline. That's what it was there for, to keep the body going, having experiences. And we, and we believe these experiences until we get wise to how this whole thought system of separation works. And we need to unplug ourselves from it. So part of that unplugging is forgiving what's in the gap. And then we come to forgiving the gap altogether. Yeah. 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 Sounds easy. Well, it, that's what he says. That's what time is for, right? Mm. We repurpose time and recognize we're not going to get it all overnight, but you know, we, every day we wake up, we join, this is the best and only use of time to forgive the contents of the gap, forgive what we thought was true and accept the atonement instead. Yeah. Ah, thank you, sis. Thank you. Yeah. And it, it's encouraging that we each have this. I like this footnote here in the COA it says, since each person is given his or her own special part, in God's plan, all parts simply refers to all of those individual parts. I am salvation's means in that I help bring salvation about through my special function. I am salvation's end because the goal of salvation is to find the sinlessness that God has placed in me and in all of us. So there's, um, I just am encouraged by the special function that each one of us has that we can certainly and easily and joyfully fulfill that serves the entire awakening of the sonship. And how can we really accept that and then have any false humility at all? Oh, not me or so-and-so's got it, but I don't. All those yeah. ways that the false humility attacks our thought, you just out the window with this lesson. Yeah. 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 And, and for those of you who who would like to know more about what we've been talking about here about shadow figures, mm. um, there's a, a couple of recommended blogs. Um, it actually talks about shadow figures and fleshes it out more in practical terms in uh, a blog, part two of a blog called Why the Body Suffers. And the, the, there's also another blog, Why the Body Suffers Special Relationships, Part 1. So if you have the time, if, you, if your guidance leads you there, then I would say listen to both Part 1 and Part 2. But if you don't have the time, <laughs> that's funny, if you don't have the time. Um, then <laughs> Make just, it. No. <laughs> just, yeah, right. Listen to Part 2. Yeah. It's about shadow figures special yes. relationships there i think it'll be quite helpful and you'll find the links directly under the under the video here in the youtube yeah and we were talking about yeah. maybe an exercise not that we hand out exercises and there's no homework with any of this but maybe it might be helpful 
uh, when I mention a lot of us are recognizing there's this pattern, why do I keep attracting the same thing over and over again? Well, can we just maybe spend a little time with that question? You know, what, what is the pattern? Yeah. How is it the same? What is the message that you receive from that behavior? How far back does that message go? Can you remember the first time you heard that message? Mm. Could it be that you're selecting your partners in an effort to continue the belief that special flavor of unworthiness? Can we recognize that in light of the shadow figure teaching from Jesus? Maybe we'll make the connection and be willing to forgive that. Mm. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And for me, in my experience too, what helped me was doing an exercise to see, you know, what am I, this sounds, this sounds terrible, but it is the ego, all right? Mm -hmm. yes. What do I need this person for, a sig significant other? What do I need them for? And this includes our children. I had to do this with my daughter, mm -hmm. um, you know, earlier on, particularly when she was very ill and nearly died, I had to go and ask, what do I need her for? What do I need from her? Mm -hmm. Well, when she nearly died, I went right down to the core, which is I need her to live. Mm -hmm. And then I ask why? To prove that I am a guiltless mother. Uh, yeah. Did you see how selfish that is? Yes right okay Whew. okay yeah yeah that's so really i that that led me whoa that led me really really deep to see what do i use my child for uh what do i need my child for what do i need my uh you know my partner for what do i need anybody for mm -hmm. because jesus told me many years ago that just swap out the word need for use which was shocking to me at the time yeah oh my god because then i had to write i statements mm -hmm. i need my partner i use my partner, partner. for fill in the blank mm -hmm. right yes or i or i use my child for fill in the blank yeah and the ego has to answer that mm -hmm. luckily that's not us no, it's not, but it's a great way to flush it up and out these shadow figures and identify it. And so that we can forgive it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we can tell where we're still unforgiving of mm -hmm. like, you can be 65 years old and still be unforgiving of your parents. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. They don't so have to be incarnate for this to be working itself out. For exactly. Sure. Yeah. 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 So we can do it with our with our parents, mm -hmm. just ask what yes. it is that we wanted from them. What okay. are we trying to get from them, even if they may have passed over right. and they're no longer alive in a body? Because whatever we're wanting, still now presently wanting from our parents when we were young, mm -hmm. if we believe right now that we didn't get what we wanted, mm -hmm. we're going to milk everybody else in our life for it right. it sounds terrible and yeah and it's going to kill us that's <laughs> yeah so we have to start with the premise that i lack i'm not love i don't have love i'm this empty shell and i need and i needed it from mom and dad and they didn't give it to me and now they're past so who's going to give it to me mm -hmm. so it's going to be your partner it's going to be your children it's going to be whomever right oh You're right extracting it from somebody and that's not a relationship at all you're still trying to come heal the original uh vengeance that you felt as a child going what the heck what's wrong with me why don't you love me so it's all of this story is to prevent us from being still coming into our holiness and recognizing i overflow because i am love i'm not that empty shell i don't need anything i am everything that's what this all this practice is bringing us to the felt state of our innocence that there's been no separation we cannot lack because we're one in god mm. Mm -hmm. thank you thanks this is very helpful I think and, so. and this just backing up a little bit but i don't want to leave it out because it just came flying in okay was that some of us 
will will um, will use the body, mm -hmm. right? So we'll we'll try and get everything we can out of the body, mm. yeah, or our achievements. So we'll be driven, yes, to you know extract everything we can mm -hmm. from the body and from our achievements etc through the ego will like lip plumping like what <laughs> what did you say lip plumping <laughs> limp 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 plopping lip oh lip <laughs> Just so being funny. naughty and it fell flat because my sis didn't get it. I'm anyway. sorry, I didn't get it. That's no. all right. When no, you said I'm driven to extract everything, oh. and I said or or insert or you know what we, yeah, the things that we put the body through and do to it to try to get the love or the appreciation or the attention or you know my goodness, yes. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I can't have a facelift now? Nope, no <laughs> facelift. <for you. laughs> I'm not a body. I am free. You go to settings and you go to video. <laughs> oh, that's right. And there's a facelift setting on Zoom. Is, Is that there? right? Okay. No. <laughs> it's just, that'd be worth thousands. <laughs> uh, but it's true, right? I mean, this sense of lack and what we do with to the body and with the body to try to overcome that. And we look out upon a whole generation, generations um, that seem to be, you know, insane with this belief. Yeah, trying to overcome their sense of lack. And the only lack is the belief in separation. Mm. Union is the answer. Union's what we all desire. Yeah. Are we part of God's plan for salvation or what? We are. Yep. We are the means and the end. Yes, we are. Yeah. God's holy son. Okay, that was a mouthful, but we wanted to stretch it as far as we could in every direction, get the whole enchilada. We wouldn't want to cheat you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So stay open to be the salvation of the world for my sake and Nook's. <laughs> yes, thank you. Please save us. Yes, please. God help me. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> we'll see you next Bye. time.